Okay, so in this video, we're gonna figure out what weight loss expectations you should expect for yourself. Now, everybody's gonna be different with this, and it's quite difficult for me to do a generic video. So this is where one-to-one -one coaching could come in. If you're interested in that, if you're interested in upgrading to that, just shoot me a message if you're not already on that. So on the screen now, you're gonna see my diet adherence graph. So as you can see, the more you go in terms of weight loss, so you get up to 2% weight loss per week, the harder it's gonna be or the more difficult it's gonna be, more so on your mindset than um, your body. Your body can actually deal with, with that, but more your mind. But there are gonna be some adaptations your body's gonna go through to achieve 2% weight loss per week. So you can see in the middle, I've got the sweet spot, which is your 1% weight loss per week. This is the kind of weight loss you should really be looking to achieve. Anything less than this is gonna be easier. So what I'm gonna do now is go through some reasons why you should go higher or lower on this scale, that's which will be more suited to you and your weight loss goals. So this next section is for people that need to be sticking more towards the 0.5 to 1% weight loss per week as your goal. Okay, so if you're one of these people um, and you've had some history with dieting in the past, so you've done yo-yo dieting, you've lost weight, you've gained weight, you've lost weight, you've gained weight, or you've tried lots of different diets, stay more towards the 0.5 to the 1% per week. If you have had a history of avoiding foods, so low carbs or low fats, or you've done Weight Watchers or Slimming's World, and you've had some sort of um, thoughts towards food being good or bad, if you've done that in the past, keep it low. If you've ever done any or had any binge eating issues like I did in the past, again, keep it low. Or if you've got any health concerns or any health issues that affect fee, uh, fatigue, or if you've got anything your doctor suggests that you shouldn't do weight loss for, something like type one diabetes, which is a whole different subject, and I'd rather you message me privately and we can chat about that, because that can be quite complicated. So the sweet spot, or the 1% per week, would look something like if you were 200 pounds, you're just gonna aim for around about one to two pound weight loss per week. So on the screen now, you can see a list of different weights, um, weight losses for the type of person you are personally. So for example, if you are very lean already, you would wanna be looking for a lower amount of weight loss per week. So the average might only be 0.2 to 0.5 pounds maximum weight loss per week. But obviously the other end of the scale, if you're classified as obese, two to three pounds per weight loss, per week weight loss would be actually fine as well. So going back to the earlier conversation about having a healthier relationship with food, if you haven't yet watched my video on that, go and watch that so you can understand that in depth. It might be worth spending a lot of time building a healthier relationship with food before you even attempt any weight loss or at least keep your weight loss really, really low and just work on building a healthy relationship with food in the first place. So during a six-week transformation, I won't necessarily be looking for someone who's going to be the winner of the prizes who has lost the most weight, it will actually be people who have transformed the best. And of course, transforming doesn't just mean the body, it can be in the mind too. Now, if none of that applies to you, you've never dieted, you've got a healthy relationship with food, you're not hungry all the time, and you haven't ever avoided foods, which is not many people to be fair, or you've worked on that for quite amount of time, this is where you can actually go a lot faster. So if you can get weight loss done quicker, you're going to be able to get back to maintenance quicker, which is actually going to be a little bit more healthier for your body overall, as long as you're not having any detrimental effects by being in a strong calorie deficit, which could make the other things worse, what we spoke about earlier on. During a really harsh calorie deficit, you might actually lose some muscle, which is actually fine, but during if it's short and sweet, you can lift some weights, you can do exercise to try and offset that, but then when you go back to maintenance, you'll quite easily gain that muscle back quite quickly. So it's not something you really need to worry about, although most of the fitness industry does talk about that a hell of a lot, but it's actually quite difficult to lose muscle. So this whole conversation is about sticking to it or adherence. Usually, from the research and from my experience working with people, the faster you go without being experienced with nutrition, the harder it is to keep the weight loss on afterwards. That's why I keep talking about the 1% as being the sweet spot. It's a good amount of weight loss, but it's also nicely balanced in the middle, so you're not gonna affect any of the mindset issues that make you put the weight back on at the end of the diet. As a rule of thumb, 
aim for the 1%. And in other videos, we're going to talk about how to adjust to be closer to the number that you're going to aim for. So if weight loss hasn't happened or if weight loss has happened too much. So well done. Keep going. You're doing well.